For the fourth straight day, President Obama and congressional leaders will convene at the White House to try to break an impasse in the debt ceiling talks. So far, progress remains elusive. Yesterday, Democrats failed to get Republicans to agree to new revenues. This is Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell offered a so-called last choice option. It would allow the president to raise the federal debt limit three times before 2013 without cutting government spending. So how does President Obama feel about all of this? Well, yesterday he sat down with CBS Evening News anchor Scott Pelley for an in-depth conversation. Scott is with us this morning from Washington. Scott, good to see you this morning. Great to see you this morning, Erica. The president appeared in the interview determined that he and the leaders from Congress can still get a deal in place in time, but he kept the pressure on Republicans. There's been a lot of heated rhetoric in all of this. One of the things the president told us yesterday was that he couldn't guarantee Social Security checks will go out in August if there is no deal. For their part, the Republicans fired back. Senator Mitch McConnell, the leader of the Republicans in the Senate, said that he didn't believe any kind of solution could be found as long as Mr. Obama was still in the White House. Do you regret any of the things that you've said in all of this? No, I think I've been pretty restrained. I, uh, <laughs> well, you told the Congress they don't do their work as well as your daughters do their homework. Well, what I said was that they procrastinate, and that is absolutely true. I don't think I'd get any dispute about that anywhere in the country. I mean, the fact of the matter is that we should not be leaving an issue of this magnitude that affects the world economy as well as the American economy to the last minute. And, and yet, Congress often leaves things to the last minute and yeah. engages in the kind of brinkmanship that I think is pretty dangerous. Tell me about these meetings that you're having. Have there been raised voices, tense moments? You know, I think everybody uh, has been professional and everybody's been polite. Uh, but I think that what we haven't seen is a recognition that at a certain point, you leave politics aside, you set aside what gives you a tactical advantage at any given moment. Uh, you leave out your ideological predispositions and you just try to figure out a problem. And I think the vast majority of people uh, across the country are looking to Washington to see if we can finally do something uh, that we say is important, that people agree is important, uh, but requires some courage and, and some tough choices. Ronald Reagan and Tip O'Neill were on opposite sides of the political spectrum, but they respected each other, they liked each other, and they got things done. Do you like Speaker Boehner? I do. And uh, I think John would like to do the right thing. Do you trust him? Uh, I, I do trust that uh, when John tells me something, he means it. Uh, I think that his challenge right now is inside his caucus. Uh, I think uh, his challenge is, is that uh, a party that has you know, gained power making very hard uh, you know, ideological statements that they're having trouble now because they're kind of boxed in. Can you tell the folks at home that no matter what happens, mm -hmm. the Social Security checks are going to go out on August the 3rd? There are about $20 billion worth of Social Security checks that have to go out the day after the government is supposedly going to go into default. Well, this is not just a matter of Social Security checks. These are veterans' checks. These are uh, folks on disability and their checks. Uh, there are about 70 million checks that go out. Can you guarantee as president those checks will go out on August the 3rd? I cannot guarantee that those checks go out on August 3rd if we haven't resolved this issue because there may simply not be the money in the coffers to do it. The Republican leader in the Senate yeah. said that they can't do business with you. As long as you occupy this House, there will be no deal. Well, uh, that, then he's going to have to explain to me uh, how it is that uh, we're going to avoid default, uh, because I'm going to be president here uh, for at least uh, uh, another year and a half. And I don't think the American people would expect that uh, the leader of the Republican Party in the Senate uh, would simply say that uh, we're not going to do business with uh, the President of the United States. How optimistic are you that a deal can be done? Time is running out. Well, I think we can get it done. This is not a technical problem at this point. Um, we know that uh, we're going to have to make some cuts. Uh, and I've already said that we should be making at least a trillion dollars worth of spending cuts. I've already, I've already identified uh, cuts uh, where uh, 
you know, basic core functions of government can continue. We can continue to make investments in education and uh, in basic research and in infrastructure, uh, but still live within our means. We know we're going to have to change entitlements, and we know we're going to need revenues if we want a, a, a big package to solve the deal. Now, if, if it turns out that the other side won't budge on anything, then uh, we're going to be here every day until we get this done. Senator McConnell's proposal, which, which we mentioned briefly at the top, came out after you sat down with the president. Uh, but what are the White House and, and other leaders saying about it this morning? Well, there's a sense of relief. You can almost feel it all across Washington today, Erica, because Senator McConnell's proposal would help them step back from the brink. The president's spokesperson, James, uh, Jay Carney, said yesterday that default is not an option, and they said some positive things about Senator McConnell's proposal. So everyone today is debating that proposal, but there is a sense that it lets some of the pressure off and may help the country avoid default. So in some ways, too, Scott, it seems to let some of the pressure off uh, politically, because even though the president said it's time to, it told you it's time to set politics aside, neither party wants to be the one that, that causes anyone, that causes the U.S. to default. So you say a sense of relief. Does, does it seem like, too, a compromise may actually be on the horizon? Well, the, the problem here is trying to get a deal of this magnitude done in this period of time. I mean, think about what they're talking about. They're talking about tax policy, reforming Social Security, reforming Medicare, deep cuts in defense spending, and they need to get it all done by the end of next week in order to give Congress enough time to pass the legislation that would enable all of that. A lot of people looking at this have thought that it's impossible. And so this would be an option that would prevent the country from defaulting on its debts on August the 2nd and allow the talks to continue. But these are very contentious issues that haven't been solved over years. Mm -hmm. And everyone is quite doubtful that this can be done in just a matter of days. How did the president seem overall to you? Was he anxious? Was he frustrated? I would say neither. You, you know the president, Erica. He, he never betrays anger or frustration, at least not to reporters. He's a very, a very cool, low b blood pressure kind of guy. And uh, we had a terrific discussion. He did seem uh, a little bit tired. I will admit that. He, uh, he seemed a little bit tired. He seemed like he'd been working very hard. He was planning on going to a Medal of Honor presentation a little bit later in the afternoon there at the White House. He was looking forward to that. Uh, but he seemed very determined and absolutely sticking to his guns and a little bit tired after all these negotiations that are going on, as you know, every day now. Yeah, I guess not surprising when we'd be tired after that. Scott, thanks for being with us. We're going to check in with you uh, for a little bit more on that interview a bit later in the show. Great to be with you. Thank you.